Europe is quietly rewiring how it watches the sea, and the latest move looks small until you understand what it unlocks. The European Maritime Safety Agency, EMSA, selected Airbus's FlexRotor VTOL drone under a new maritime surveillance framework contract. The headline is Coastal Monitoring, but the subtext is much bigger. The European Union is institutionalizing drones as a routine layer of maritime power, delivered not as a one-off procurement, but as a shared service that any participating Coast Guard can tap into on demand. Why does that matter? Because the sea is where Europe's problems stack up in the same grid square. Irregular migration routes shift week to week. Illegal fishing fleets learn patterns faster than bureaucracies do. Pollution incidents can go from a slick to a diplomatic incident in hours. Smuggling networks exploit gaps between jurisdictions, and maritime crime thrives on one persistent reality. It's hard to keep eyes on water that never stops moving. So the real question is not whether drones belong in Coast Guard operations. It's whether Europe can scale them fast enough, integrate them cleanly enough, and share the data widely enough to turn surveillance into response. The contract tells you the EU thinks it can. The framework is valued at about 30 million euros with an initial two-year period and options extending it to a total of four years. Operations are due to begin in 2026, carried out by a French service provider, Extensi, while the product at the center is Airbus's FlexRotor uncrewed aerial system. This is important. EMSA is not just buying aircraft, it's buying RPS services. That phrase is the pivot point. Instead of each country building its own drone unit from scratch, training pipelines, maintenance chains, data links, certification headaches, EMSA centralizes the service and pushes the output to everyone who needs it, EU member states plus Norway and Iceland. In other words, the EU is treating maritime drone surveillance the way it treats certain satellite services, pooled capability, shared picture, standardized delivery, and the delivery mechanism is the heart of the system. Flex rotor missions are designed to stream electro-optical and infrared imagery plus radar data in real time to the EMSA RPA's data center, allowing national authorities and relevant EU institutions to follow missions live. That sounds administrative, but think about what it does operationally. It reduces the single patrol boat, single camera feed problem. Instead of the launching unit being the sole owner of the picture, the architecture is built for distribution. So when a Coast Guard crew sees something suspicious, the people who can coordinate assets across borders are seeing it too, at the same time in the same format, with fewer delays and fewer translation layers. How often do maritime failures come down to not having assets but not having alignment? This model is designed to fix alignment. Now, why Flex Rotor specifically? Because its profile matches the unglamorous reality of maritime surveillance. FlexRotor sits in the small tactical VTOL category with a maximum launch weight around 25 kilograms and payload capacity up to roughly 8 kilograms. It combines vertical takeoff and landing with the efficiency of a fixed-wing aircraft, which is exactly what you want when your runway is a moving deck or a patch of pier. Airbus describes a launch and recovery footprint of roughly 3.7 by 3.7 meters, small enough to matter. That means a drone detachment can operate from austere coastal sites, small harbors, remote islands, and smaller vessels that would never support classic runway dependent systems. It also means the drone can follow the fleet, shifting as the operational picture shifts without requiring major infrastructure. In maritime security, flexibility is not a nice to have, it's the difference between being present and being irrelevant. Endurance is the other key. Flex rotor's typical endurance is often described in the 12 to 14 hour class with an EMSA configuration expected around 10 hours depending on sensors and mission profile. 10 hours is an operational statement. It means persistent coverage over a search area, not a quick look. It means tracking a contact long enough to confirm patterns. It means providing overwatch while other assets reposition. It also changes the economics. Manned helicopters and patrol aircraft are powerful, but they are expensive and constrained by crew duty cycles. A long-endurance VTOL drone does not replace them, it reshapes how often you need to use them. It pushes manned assets toward decisive moments, not routine scanning. And that is exactly how you multiply limited resources in an environment where demand never stops. Airbus also positions FlexRotor as payload agnostic, with a design intended to host different sensors depending on requirements. Today, EMSA's package emphasizes EOIR and radar because those are the bread and butter tools for maritime domain awareness. EOIR gives identification and evidence. What is it? What is it doing? Who is on deck? Radar expands detection. What is out there even when visibility collapses? But the strategic implication is the upgrade path. If you can integrate additional payloads later, signals intelligence, communications relay, specialized maritime sensors, you can adapt the same airframe to emerging problems like dark ships operating without AIS, 
or the need to monitor protected zones with better discrimination, or simply improving networking between dispersed units. The drone is not just a camera, it is a node. And this is not a paper capability. Flex rotor selection also rests on the idea that it has already been stress tested in maritime conditions. Airbus highlights demonstration sorties across Europe, and in 2025, the French Navy ran a multi-day campaign from a small patrol vessel off northwest France, validating autonomous takeoff and landing on a moving deck by day and night. Airbus also references a June 2025 maritime interdiction support mission under a Marlins task order, working with U.S. Southern Command and Mexican law enforcement to track a low-profile vessel suspected of narcotics trafficking and provide continuous real-time overwatch to boarding forces. Whether you view those examples as proof or marketing, they serve a purpose, to frame Flex Rotor as mature enough for operational service, not just trials, and maturity matters when you're building a service model. A pooled EU capability cannot afford fragile hardware that only works on calm days with a perfect team. It needs repeatability. So what does Europe get for 30 million euros? Not a wonder weapon, something more valuable. It gets persistence, standardization and scale. EMSA can offer two parallel deployments from different takeoff sites and add additional detachments if needed. That means the EU can surge coverage to pressure points, migration corridors, pollution incidents, fisheries enforcement hotspots, without every nation scrambling to assemble a bespoke package. It also means smaller maritime nations can access high-end surveillance without building the full RPS ecosystem internally. And in the background, it builds a shared technical standard, common data flows, common operational concepts, and a growing habit of acting off the same picture. This is where the coastal monitoring label becomes misleading. The real transformation is cultural and institutional. The EU is normalizing unmanned systems as a core Coast Guard tool, and it's doing it through centralization. When data goes through the EMSA RPS data center, it becomes easier to coordinate multi-agency responses, easier to brief decision makers with consistent feeds, and easier to integrate drone-derived intelligence with satellites, patrol aircraft, and surface vessels. That is layered surveillance, wide area detection from above, persistent local tracking from drones, and interdiction from ships. If you want a maritime picture that is both broad and sharp, you need layers. And this is happening in a security environment that is getting less forgiving. Critical undersea infrastructure has become a strategic vulnerability. Energy routes are politically sensitive. Gray zone activity thrives precisely because it stays below the threshold of war while imposing real costs. In that context, a modular, scalable drone service is not only about stopping crimes, it's about reducing ambiguity. If you can see more sooner and share it faster, you force hostile or illicit actors to operate under greater risk of exposure. You also reduce the political friction of who owns the incident because the evidence is shared in near real time. But there is an uncomfortable question hiding under the optimism. Does centralized surveillance translate into centralized action? Seeing is not the same as solving. A shared picture can reveal problems that national authorities still have to handle with limited ships, limited crews, and limited legal tools. And the more effective the sensor network becomes, the more it will surface the gap between detection and enforcement. That gap is where policy either evolves or breaks. Still, EMSA's choice of flex rotor signals a direction of travel. Starting in 2026, as these detachments begin real missions, the EU will be running an experiment in operational integration at sea. Drones as a service, surveillance as a shared public good, and data as the connective tissue between national coast guards. If it works, the question won't be whether Europe uses tactical drones routinely. The question will be how far this model expands into border surveillance, environmental monitoring, and perhaps increasingly into maritime security tasks that sit closer to defense than safety. And if that sounds like a technical procurement story, look again. It's a story about how institutions adapt when the sea gets busier, riskier, and harder to control, and whether Europe can turn a drone's camera feed into strategic leverage.